Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. That's all right. It's the time of the month when replays last just a little bit longer than usual, so you know what to do if you haven't got time to watch it now. Dump it in your watch later playlist and catch it when you do have the time. The astute of you out there will notice, of course, that the intro screen is back. That usually means I've got some news to present, and I do, and it's actually from weeks ago. I want to apologise for Roey. I've missed... I don't know. I think it's made about three casts, something like that, where I was supposed to be putting out this news. Hopefully this news is still in date and still relevant, but I assume he would have told me otherwise if it wasn't. Um, so what have we got today? We will bring up our handy little browser. First of all, we wanted to mention the FAF beta changes are up on the FAF website. It's got a list of uh, all of the different things that's going on in the latest patch there. You can see that the Scathis is getting a little bit of a, uh, a reduction in its firing spread. No bad thing there, I think. Cyber and Destroyer getting a max range increase, like it needs it, but I'm sure the powers that be know what they're doing. Uh, and the like, you can see there's a handy little list here of all the different units and what's going on with them. So if you want to have a shifty, uh, that link in the description below this video, all of these links that I will be doing here we're talking about here now will be in the description if they're not there guys you know what to do yell at me until i make it so what's next well the uh, faf promotional team have i don't know if it's control but they certainly have access to the forged alliance forever reddit thread that was something that was lost some time ago don't exactly know why but uh, anyway they've got control of it now so it's a good place if you're a redditor to catch up on a lot of the promotional stuff you can see they list tournament games and whatnot so go and check that out guys and last but not least there is going to be a new league system essentially it's going to be divided up into four little seasonal batches first of january for instance up till the 29th of feb and first of april 31st of may that sort of thing it's going to have new tiers and whatnot and uh, there might also be some monetary reimbursement for those who perform particularly well all very exciting so like i say if you want to check those out guys check the links in the description below and if i haven't put it there you know what to do yell at me until i make it so all right it's going to be custom 5v5 pro-am today so an eclectic mix of joes and pros and it's going down on a generated map i'm ready you guys are ready and the players are sure as hell ready so let's go on over to the game zone to see how they're going to get on ching Ka-ching! No instant loading for you. You must have done something wrong in a previous life. Where are you, sir? Where are you? There you go. We will give the guys some time, allow them to gate in, and we will call this Team 1 up here at the top right, and this Team 2 down here at the bottom left. Starting with rearguard air position, because why not? Up at the back here for Team 1, we have Happy Song going Seraphim in baby blue. He's opening first land. Team member number two over here at the far left going mellow yellow. It's Normander. He is going UEF opening first land. Next up on the front row to the southeast in burgundy red. It's, I don't even know what to do with this. It's uh, Pikuku B. Kapobu. We'll call him Kapobu today. I'm sorry. I know I butchered that, but honestly, as a, a native English speaker and not even that brilliant at that, what am I supposed to do? Uh, but Kapobu, apologies for butchering your native tongue, whatever tongue that is. Uh, uh, no apologies for slamming you for going cyber in, though, and opening first land. Team member number four to the southeast again. It's the second greatest of the UK's southern coastal counties. It is Dorset, if you want to know the greatest this is of course Cornwall and that's not me being biased, biased. I live in Sussex which is a bit of a dump uh, anyway he's going first land in this, this season's fabulous vivacious violet and going UEF if I haven't said that already opening first land uh, last but not least for team one down here uh, what color is he rocking here sometimes it's hard because of the backdrop I think that is Dijon yellow there it is it's Spectre Slave 137 and he is going Seraphim opening first land. So that's team one. The racial makeup seems to be two Seraphim, two UEF and a Cybrin. Rocking over to team two side of the map now starting rearguard air position. It's a UEF man this time in electric blue going first land second air. It's no fear but he knows fear. It's not no fear. He knows fear. Triple five. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how well he utilizes that expression going forward. Next up onto the front row for Team 2, up here at the top left to begin with. Uh, last time I mentioned him, I think it was last time, I mentioned, I was waffling on about Total War. Uh, that's not a Total War reference. It's not Triarii, or whatever it is in Total War. It's uh, Terrari. 
which I think is some sort of uh, plant thing. <laughs> flower plant ranging I don't know I put that into Google and that's what came up a whole load of different baskets anyway he's going Aeon our first of the day in Ferrari Red opening first land going land all day by the looks of things uh, next up to his southeast in Halliborange Orange we have Popeye on roids presumably that's steroids and not hemorrhoids although who knows what happens if you eat too much spinach maybe it's uh, deforming him down there uh, he is going UEF opening first land. Team member number four in Breast Cancer Awareness Pink. It's winner of this week's amusing name award. It's Schlongdis. There he is going Seraphim opening first land. And last but not least, over here, leaving his base and into this little pondy section, it's Love Me Some Rice, another Cybrin. And uh, he's going Lurid Green opening first land, second air. So there we have it. What is the racial makeup of Team 2? It's two UEF, uh, a Seraphim, an Aeon, and a Cybrin. So there we have it. Game quality at 93%. We're more or less happy with that. Team averages 1460 for Team 2. 1500 for team one mild advantage there but barely worth noting what has the map brought for us today that's the reclaim situation tons of it pretty evenly dispersed around the map there are some decent chunks around there's a nice 2000 uh, mount blob there of reclaim right on the headland and then we've got a 600 jobby there 600 or is that an 800 no i think that's a 600 jobby something like that and then smaller piles dotted throughout decent clumps of mechs in the middle this is actually a two-tiered middle section a depression surrounding a central plateau which is actually attached to the main land masses on either side of the map and a little bit of a pond here uh, first thought i uh, first look sorry i thought that that probably wasn't going to be passable but actually no it's easily passable on closer inspection so potential for producing some navy you can see team two is wasting no time with that we've already got a couple of naval yards going down there for love me some rice no fear also looking like you'd like to get involved on that side of things we have some expansion going on here now this is a little bit tricky from my eyesight point of view these are two pretty close colors and the red is throwing me off you could be mistaken at first glance to thinking that this is uh, two bases one belonging to each member from each team actually it's not there were engineers dropped over here from team one but it looks like they're much more concerned about scooping spiky trees than setting up shop on the other side of things normanda it is normanda isn't it no it's not it's love me some rice excuse me love me some rice has set up shop on both ends so we've got two land factories there two more on the way we've got emplacements going down and on the other side of the river the hostile side of the river no less another land factory a few mass extractors pd radar all of the accoutrements that you would want from a decent base what's happening up at the top left meanwhile terrari is getting an upgrade completes that that is the second gun upgrade on board that aeon commander so we've got a bit of an aeon sniper com in action there for team two no upgrades as yet on normando and of course what happens as soon as i mention it there goes an upgrade going straight for gun upgrade but he could find himself in a pretty pickle if terrari pushes hard here might find himself having to cancel we just have a very quick look at Normanda's situation. We can see he's a little bit low on power, so that's not helping the speed of that upgrade. And now with this little push, I'm wondering if we're going to see a cancel here, which is why I'm sticking with this for now. Terrari about to move into range with his commander. That's what he can see. Doesn't yet know that that is the enemy ACU he probably feel emboldened once he sees that upgrade it's only about half done he's certainly going to claim the factory at least grabs himself an engineer kill as well that will slow up that upgrade just a little bit there goes the last two engineers but the upgrade now at about 80 85 percent and with this little incursion from normanda's forces he has to drop his own back so we're not going to see a cancel here normanda will shed some hit points but that will be all gosh it's going to shed quite a lot into the yellow down 25 percent already finally normanda completes his upgrade that gives him the range to fire back at terrari 
In come the Auroras. I'm surprised that that land factory is still operational, but it's not currently being used anyway. Looks like it's pretty much a defunct piece of industry right now. The Strikers take a little bit of the brunt of the fire as Normandus Commander moves out of range. Normandus Commander down to 5,600 HP after this little bit of pressure. There goes the land factory and the mass points around it looking like they're going to fall as well. And the radar too. So nice little successful passage of play there for Team 2. What's happening elsewhere on the map? Well, not an awful lot. We do have naval presence in the pond down here in the bottom right in quite a significant way for Love Me Some Rice and Team 2. It looks like uh, Spectre Slave has no interest, at least for the time being, in making any play for the pond. That means he's going to have to turtle up pretty darn hard on the cliff edge here. It is a nice cliff for him to turtle up. He's going to have to heavily shield it. He's going to have to put down turrets, emplacements, artillery pieces and the like because he's, I'm sure, going to be facing a barrage of inbound Seraphim awfulness. Not Seraphim, what are you talking about, Guile? Cybrin, for some reason I thought he was going. Seraphim, love me some rice. No, all about the Cybrin today. You can see just a little bit of uh, impediment that cliff edge causes. Might be a different story when you get larger vessels in play, higher quality tech. What's happening back up here at the top left? Terrari. Gazing upon some in inbound T1 bombers that drop their payload onto his Auroras. Picking up about five or six kills there, Normander. One of the bombers down. Is this bomber going to get a second bite at the cherry? Going after the land factory this time. And uh, by the looks of things, Normander dropping back as Terrari recycling his land factory, his former land factory, Normanda, down to about, well, just below 5,000 hit points. Not looking too healthy right now. New fresh group of Aurora pushing up on the plateau section above Terrari. There are defensive units. We've got two bands of Mantis here belonging to Kapobu. T3 upgrade on the way for Dorset. Already has some shield coverage around his commander. And a few engineers somehow finding their way into the pond, getting slaughtered now by these tridents of Love Me Some Rice. Grabs himself some UEF NGs right now. Om nom nom. And there's literally very little or virtually nothing of importance down here in this bottom right hand corner we've got uh, is it two mass points uh, that's a radar and a p jet literally one mass point one mass point on each side plateau adjoining this main plateau in the bottom right hand corner nothing of any material worth so i mean this is more or less dead space down here in the bottom right hand corner of the map now are we going to see Tech 2, Navy on the way. Yes, we are. 11% done already on that original naval yard for Rice. And when we start to see some destroyers and cruisers in this pond, that's going to put a lot of pressure on two bases here, potentially. A couple of attack missile launchers, though, for Spectre Slave. What can he reach with those, I wonder? Well, everything on this little section here, belonging to Rice, that's all in jeopardy. Rice is going to want to throw down some zappers up on this bank, ideally. Kill off those tack missiles as they fly over, potentially defending this rear base also in the process. Back up to the top left-hand corner. Terrari and Normander getting into it once again. Normander now with a little mobile shield gen coming in to give him some protection. Aurora's ill-advisedly following up on that encounter. Going to get themselves spanked. Three kills to the com. Never ideal. Uh, look at that. He did go for a second upgrade and it's a nano repair upgrade. So he's getting 56 hit point a second regen on that bad boy why he's looking considerably more healthy than he did just a moment ago. 
full HP. That will be 14,850 at current levels. Another little bombing run over here, and I'm just going to check my sound levels here. Yeah, that is at full. Often forget to turn it back up. Causes problems. Now, let's have a quick look at the eco side of things. Generated eco, team 2 pulling in about 520 mass per tick. Team 1 pulling in about 460. So, a major deficit for team 1. For 12 minutes in, they're going to want to get that sorted out ASAP. Tamari has taken some hits now. Gets a rank in veterancy to restore some of his health. He's down to around 8,000 hit points. Normander starting with the lower HP, but has that regen now. And can go toe-to-toe -to -toe at the same sort of range. He actually focuses in on the commander. Has he got vision on this side of things. He has got enough intel coverage. You can see the lines there. Nice little push coming through the middle from Schlongdis. He's been a bit quiet so far. But he has teched up T2 coming in now with a merry band of Ilshivas up to this forward Cybran outpost of Kapobus. Getting inside the shield coverage now. One shield depleted. Charging definitely needs to get targeted so they can take it down. Oh my god, down to 45 hit points and then they switch up the targeting. But there go the two shield gens. That base is now at least slightly more vulnerable than it was before. Terrari taking some T1 bomber action to the face. And uh, two star commander. Terrari, one star commander. Uh, with 36 kills to his name, Terrari with 31. Both of these guys using their comms courageously up front. Absolute necessity for those of you who don't actually play the game and wonder why these guys put their commanders in harm's way when it is the unit that will get you kicked out of the game if it gets destroyed meant to be protecting. The answer is, is it is also the most powerful thing you have on the field at the start of the game. If you don't use it, your opponent will and you will lose. That is why. So now we have a T2 vessel in the southeastern pond there for Rice. It's a siren that'll give themselves some good local coverage. Doesn't want to get too close to this firebase though because there is Ravager coverage. We saw Dorset getting that T3 upgrade on his commander earlier. He's taken the opportunity to plonk down a couple of Ravagers and a Clink Hammer artillery emplacement as well right behind it. So uh, that Siren is going to have trouble breaking through there. Instead, looks like Rice is going to sail it back over in this direction and keep the pressure on Spectre Slaves forward outpost. But of course, he is now building artillery installations so we've got two potentially heavy turtle candidates materializing here and here is there any way up here i don't think there is so this is actually a very naturally defensible position over here can't get up with all of this t1 spam you can see all of these zooies that have made their way across the map down here for Schlongdis. But of course they've got some decent range on them. Hugging the cliff edge. They're lobbing their ordnance now in towards Dorset's forward firebase. So much so that Dorset has been prompted to bring his commander out onto the cliff edge and he <laughs> spams up a nice T1 point defense to help deal with this little mischievous incursion. is a Zui massacre leaving only two Ravager now going up on the cliff edge might lose a couple of engineers here though that will give him great reach takes the opportunity to go after a trident ah there is 
There is a little entry point here, so floaty floaty naughty naughty has an access route up here. If Team 2 get enough Salems on the field, or rather in the pond, we could of course sail up here and make landfall, cutting off Spectre Slave from the rest of his team. That is a potential threat, and we've got drops now coming in from the southeast, although landing a little bit too close to Spectre Slave's defences there for comfort. Getting all of his zooies and his transports massacred in the process. Very ill-advised parking location. Skyhook laden with engineers for lovely some rice. Hovering around, not sure what it's supposed to be doing. Their superiority fighters for rice as well. Rice seems to be everywhere right now. I should probably have mentioned a little bit about who the star players are, but it kind of kicked off pretty fast this game. So, Happy Song handling air for Team 1. He's a 1900. Normander at the top left. He's a 1900. Terrari from Team 2 stationed in the top left. He's a 2200 and the star player today. No fear handling Team 2's air, he's a 1700, and then we've got a 1500 in Love Me Some Rice, who seems to be just about everywhere right now with his air power, his sea power. Everybody else is of Joe Station. Oh, excuse me, Spectre Slave is also a 1500 down here. Everyone else is Joe level, and Popeye on roids is uh, a sub 1000 Joe. Hopefully, he doesn't find himself. Out of his depth in this game. Haven't seen a lot from him. Although that is a very healthy T2 force that he has mustered. And is now charging along the ridge. Up towards Kapogu's forward outpost. Up and Gimme says happy song. Give you what? What is he talking about? I don't see anything there. Oh, does he want the, uh, the, uh, the radar? Uh, I mean, he was having some power problems momentarily. Maybe he... Yeah, there we go. So he's transferred the radar station over to his teammate. Question for the hardcore faffers out there. If you transfer the radar over but maintain control of the P-Gens, does that still get the adjacency bonus? Answers in the comment section below. And while you're down there, love, give us a thumbs up for goodness sake. If you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? 20 minutes in, you haven't subscribed. It's pla practically blasphemy. And yeah, the words are hard. Very successful punchy attack here from our 900 rated player. Bulldozing its way into the shields up front devoid of flak unfortunately as a couple of gunships and T1 bombers move in to attack the predictable response on top of that we've got Normanders north western army withdrawing to try and cover this but still this outpost is going to get more or less obliterated He's still got a lot of functional units with a decent amount of hit points heading northeasterly. Oh dear, but we've got some Bernies. T3 loyalists in play for Kapobu. I think that will be the end of that little attack. Wouldn't hurt to take down some of these T2 land factories. Get something for his money here. A little bit of a combined attack as well. We've got Ilshivers from Schlondis joining the fray. Ouch, is that missiles or artillery? Well, it missed wide. I would imagine it's artillery. Clink hammer under construction there. And a destroyed clink hammer probably just been taken out by these sniper bots down here. Heavy shield on the way for Terrari. Second shield upgrade. That will now be a fully upgraded commander. Bit of a saucy old Rambo com. And you can see the pressure in the bottom right pond has really been taken away. 
reduced. No immediate way in to cripple these two Team 1 players flanking this river. Show me some rice. Brought his comm back and upgraded up to Tech 3. Now he's going to have battleship firepower. Which he'll be able to utilize from way back here. That is the range he's got to work with. He parks it around about here, actually. He'll be able to hit most of this, I would imagine. <laughs> Drop here. You can see the confusion amongst Team 2's members. How do I get up here to assault this guy? Didn't really work out for him, nonetheless. 1.4k income now for Team 2 versus 1.1k. That is a bad situation. Team 1 needs to get a handle on this eco. They are well behind. They are behind a 120k mass right now. That is not good. They behind in reclaim also. No, team 1 are up in reclaim, but that's probably because a lot of the fighting has happened on their side of things. Also has personal shield and nano repair. 18,900 hit points at full health, but he's already down to about 14,000, taking a lot of inbound fire from Terrari's comm and probably from some of the sniper bots kicking around. Sniper bots located further back down here under shield coverage as T1 bombers come in over the top. Terrari taking some hits now from inbound loyalist pressure from both Normanda and from Kapobu, but Normanda taking massive damage down into the red, forced to evac the scene of the crime. That's a big old win for Terrari. Likely displacing Normanda from the top left corner completely and definitely putting this little top left corner base into action. That is on the cards for an assault now. You can push this commander right back up here. And isolate that. Terrari's next course of action is going to be some spam factories. Get ready to see tons and tons of artillery and auroras pumping out of those. Terrari, how is he doing on eco? Oh, 270, not masses. It's no fear in blue who is really pumping the gas on eco 570 happy song rear god air player for team one he's not doing too bad either at 485 but as a team team one still well down on eco potentially about to cede some territory as well at the top left hand corner things could be going better but uh, this galaxy class battleship might be about to take some damage Eats a TAC missile to the stern. Never a good place to eat a TAC missile. These TAC missile launchers here. Two of them with any kills. One of them on four, one on three. Seraphim artillery pieces as well. The longer it goes on, the harder that nut's going to be to crack. But of course there's nothing offensive coming out of this corner right now from team one it's all very very much on the defensive and while that can work it's not always guaranteed and there is the assault on the top left hand corner base little band of harbingers rolling up or rather skittering up I should say and knocking that aside with relative ease next up these T2 Mass points. Nothing in the way of defences protecting those. So Normanders drop back. He's already repped up a lot. He's about to go over 75% health into the green. And his engineers hurriedly working on a whole range of clink hammer and placements. That is the range we're talking about. He's hoping enough to keep Terrari at arm's length. 
big old air battle brewing in the bottom right now between Show Me or Love Me Some Rice, sorry, and uh, Happy Song. That seems to have gone Team One's way because No Fears Air Force is guarding Terrari up in the top left hand corner. A Novax satellite system in play for Popeye on Roids. Who, after that little attack up here on Kapobu, has just hold, held the midpoint with his T2 army. Has a sizable band of artillery as well. T3 mobile demolishers on the field. But no real targets to use them against. Preparing hard for the next assault. It's all about the defences. Strength through iron. Lots of triads, clink hammers, shield gens, stealth gens. And Terrari, looking like he doesn't want to pick that fight right now. Backing off with his commander. Wonder how many harbingers he's got in here. He's got 23 on the field, so not a huge amount. Air battle brewing, and I'm actually seeing remnants of no fear in that. And that's gone really badly for Team 2, so a win in the air for Team 1, something that is desperately needed. They will take wins anywhere they can get right now. Love me some rice. Spits out a strategic missile submarine and is giving it massive assistance to load its first missile. Didn't really use that galaxy much, it's only got four kills. Now we're moving into the late game. Experimentals going up all over the place. There's another satellite launching. This time it's Dorset who's built one. I'm wondering where the satellite's currently been used. The satellite of uh, Popeye. There it is, right the way over the top of Dorset's base. Targeting fusion reactors. Just a couple not covered by the shield at the current time. Dorset probably wants to do something about that before he loses one or both of them. Uh-oh, well, what have we got here? Massive, massive strap bomber sortie. Syntha moving across the map, and it's going in Terrari's direction. We've just seen them win a big old air fight. No fear knows what's up. He's moving in to intercept, but he is still down on the number of fighters. Strategic launch detected. So those strap bombers move north. They go after the Colossus, which is on the move up here, going towards Normanda. Normanda's huddled under shield coverage, hoping he can contain this attack. He is getting assistance from Kapobu, but the biggest threat to anyone right now is Terrari. The payloads are away. Wow, he survives the first bombing run just into the red. 800 hit points. But if any one of those bombers gets another one away, and it looks like they have, Terrari down and out. And at the same time, as Terrari was going down, we heard the nuke go off. I'm guessing that was the nuke from this strategic missile submarine. That's a monkey lord. My goodness, this game is escalating quickly. Where is the, where's the sub gone? Has that been taken out already? There it is. And it doesn't have a nuke loaded. So, while we were seeing Terrari eat Syntha... Doo doo. Love me with some rice. I keep wanting to say show me some rice, but it's not. It's love me some rice. Was launching a nuke at Kapobu and taking out his main base. Strategic missile defense not in play. Kapobu, after that hit, now pulling in a rather miserable 117 mass per tick, but that's a lot more than Terrari is pulling in right now. And full share is not repeat not on so it's a manly game here tonight these chaps can hold their heads high upon finishing this one none of them have to rush off and take a shower or anything <laughs> sorry 
No judgment on the rest of you. None whatsoever. Well, some, but nothing you should be concerned about. Another wave of strap bomber attacks lined up, potentially, waiting for the next victim. And this is huge. Now that Terari is down and out, top rated player from Team 2 as well, they have lost their ringer. But not only that, Normanda had been on the back foot for some, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Maybe 15. Pushed right back. He'd lost the top left-hand corner. Now, potentially, he's going to be able to expand out into this power vacuum. Now, where is that monkey lord going? It hasn't covered a great deal of distance. Suspect it doesn't know what it's doing. No, that's why. That's the second one. <laughs> The lead one already about to emerge from the hostile waters up here. Wonder which way he will turn. Will he go after Spectre Slave or will he hang a Louie and go after Dorset? Who's working on his second Novak satellite. Where is the Novak satellite currently targeting, I wonder? Got one. Yeah, it's over here. He's only got one. Trying to pick off some of these resourcing options, but each one here belonging to No Fear with its own personal shield coverage. He's not messing around at all. And look at this. We have support commanders out rushing up over here to join these engineers already cannibalizing Terrari's old base. Look at this. A monkey lord without a backbone. Those spiders are invertebra invertebrates, aren't they? So, no real surprises there. Amazing not to see it being rushed out. Try and put some damage down. And of course, they've already seen how bad the air situation is after losing their teammate just a few moments ago. Probably very wary of just getting bombed into oblivion once emerging from the water. Instead, those bombers will be deployed against this inbound Ithota from Schlongdis. who is still getting good damage dealt against this forward outpost, this defensive position. Oh, down goes the SMD. Another nuke out. Who's that out from this time? It's actually out from Spectre Slave in the east. It's going to be the lucky beneficiary. Well, it looks like it's going to be Love Me Some Rice. Not going to be growing much rice in this nuclear wasteland. Boom! Just in cyber tonight. And that is very, very painful. So... Team 2 somehow, despite losing to Rari and getting hit with that nuke, somehow they are still up by about a hundred mass per tick. Of course, Kapogu has been hit with a nuke also. Another big air battle. No fear and happy song. Absolutely going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's one air battle after another right now. Major winners, no fear, went in with fewer units and emerged with fewer units. It looked like the overall casualty rate might have been even, although there are some lightning tanks parked south of the ridge here, inflicting some extra damage. We have some suicide T1 bombers while you're at it. Now this is what we were expecting to see. Missile cruisers, courtesy of No Fear, who set up shop with his own naval yards just the other side of this little headland. And these guys are equipped with their own shield boats, protecting them from potential inbound artillery fire and tank missile fire for that matter. That was... I wonder if that was the same chicken? It can't have been. That got taken out further down here, surely. 
maybe it was. Certainly the uh, the same player, Shlongdis, looking for a way up here. Not actually sure that's scalable, is it? So maybe it wasn't. He was just looking to put some more damage on anything he could reach. This really is a very defensible map. Only way in on the land really is up and down this section. Monkey Lord did make it out over here once we'd had a few air battles. It hung a right turn, didn't go after Dorset. Took out a few buildings on the edge of Spectre Slave's base, but didn't get major penetration. Spectre Slave will breathe a sigh of relief after that one. But we have artillery falling, and it's falling on Dorset at the moment. Where's it coming Strategic from? It's coming from detected. Popeye. He's got one operational duke, and he's more than three quarters done on a second. Are we seeing any coming out down here? Yep, there's a Mavor under construction. Half done for no fear. We've just had another nuke out. Where has that come from? Struggling to identify it. Has it been shot down by someone already? Ah, okay. There was the strategic missile submarine. I like it. Cold War style. Rolling right up the coast to give them as little time as possible to react. Must have been aimed up over here. But we do have strategic missile defense. And uh, it's about to be reloaded. But it only had one in the clip at the time. It's actually a double nuke launcher situation over here for Spectre Slave. Triple even, excuse me. Explain why that's funny. I missed the third nuke launcher in the premium cast this week. I mean, it was funny to me. It's not funny to those that watch, I guess. <laughs> and if you would like to see me miss things on a more regular basis, guys, the Patreon's a mere dollar a month. You can access to the Discord, our little budding community as well. We've got 84 casts on there and growing premium content for all of my favourite people. Dorset now under double duke fire. Seems like they're raining in pretty quick. And taking Novak's fire from Popeye who really has it in for him by the looks of things. How long on that Mabel? Oh, I thought it was more done than that. What? What? Was that hit by something? I'm seeing a great big explosion-y marker. Was that already there? Answers in the comment section below. I swear that that was up here before. Did that get taken out and he's rebuilding it? I don't know. Potentially. Potentially I was waffling. There are lots of planes kicking about. Maybe it got strap-bombed just a moment ago and he's rebuilding it. Highly possible. Once again, if you do spot anything that I miss, guys, do get in touch in the comments. Strategic if not launch for detected. my benefit, and certainly for everybody else watching. Now Governor's moving up on this forward base, which is pretty comprehensively shielded, but even those are weakening now. There's a lot of tactical missile defense in here. I'm trying to block that inbound missile fire. Shield collapses, but it's just about keeping up the spam. Another nuke out from Team 2. This is from one of the base launchers instead. Took down a radar and some low order spam, but no great damage dealt there. Perhaps he was going after that fatty. If he was, that was some nice evasion from Normanda. He really is spreading out like a virus into this top left hand corner now. What uh, a demise of an opponent even battling against will do. The territory opens up before you and all the infrastructure goes. But look at this big old land incursion from Kapobu advancing with a whole load of bricks and a megalith covered by T3 mobile anti-air. Dorset still holding it together 
under fire. Although, actually, there's a good reason why he's holding it together. Team 2 have switched. Duke's now trained on Happy Song instead. Who's been absolutely deadly with his Air Force detected. in this game. And Popeye having success here. 900 rated player taking it to... A 1900 rated player with standoff tactics. Happy Song absorbing some fire down to 7,800 hit points now. Another nuke out from Spectre Slave. This one going after Popeye. Has he got anti nuke loaded? Yes, he has. How many more are in there? He's got two more in the clip, and a third one is about to complete. Gosh, I'll be building another SMD just to keep myself safe. This is Duke number three that's under construction. How's Mavor getting on? Mavor is very nearly done. And that is a problem for Strategic Team 1 if that's allowed detected. to complete. Laser at 22% for Love Me Some Rice. Who has transferred everything over to No Fear. Would you look at that? Also, Kapobu seems to have inherited all of Normander's stuff. So we've got a couple of people who've dropped out. It's looking pretty even, though, in terms of division of labor. Still just one proper death. Terari. wonder if uh, it was a mutual dropout time to cycle through the chat and see or it's just coincidental we've had two guys drop away now it's Spectre Slave who's drawing some artillery fire you have a bit of a problem with this constant changing up of targets just when you're getting somewhere softening up an area you then switch up you're giving it's a bit like Hitler switching to the cities when he had the RAF on their knees, bombing the airfields. Brits bombed Germany's cities. He got all pissy and switched up. It cost him the whole Battle of Britain. But for the time being, there is zero Tech 3 static artillery on the field for Team 1 that I can see. So all of that fire is coming in one direction. True, we've got nukes going in the opposite direction. No, we do have one. Looks like that duke might just have completed. So Dorset has a duke. Working on some more Novak satellite stations. Ah, but look at Spectre Slave just get obliterated. And I'm wondering if that's because the Mavors arrived. Indeed it has... Mighty Phallus of Doom. Breaking hearts wherever it goes. And the rest. And that is a problem for Team 1. If they can't find a way to take that out, that might be it. It's almost neck and neck in eco. 100, 200... Mass differential, but at this stage, at around about 2k, that's not a huge amount. Now they've switched up once again, so they've torn a hole in Spectre Slave. They've taken out all three nuke launchers which he had under that shield coverage. They're now moving on to bigger threats. It looks like they're going after the one man who has an operational emplacement that can reach their bases. It's Dorset. Shield coverage capitulates. And in comes the Ordnance and that Ion Cannon from Orbit. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Is that the end of the Duke? There it goes. Oh, oh where's Dorset's com? There he is standing in the midst of all of that destruction. Down to 5,000 hit points. The shield blinks on and gives him a bit of coverage. Very lucky to still be in it, but for how long with this inbound fire? Oh, 
Dorset receiving some repair assistance from these rovers. Shlongdis. Wow! Wow, wow, wow. That was my bad. How did that make it all the way through down here? Answers in the comment section, guys. And if Thota, belonging to Spectre, making it all the way down here. How? How? And there goes Dorset, taken out by the artillery. Do you know what? I'm going to have to reload this, and I'm going to have to do a YouTube short later. It will probably be uploaded tomorrow. Spoiler alert, don't watch the short before this one. Maybe I have to leave it a couple of days, give people a chance to watch this. We can see just what happened there because I don't know how he managed to get an Ithota down in that position. I'm sure everybody will be chatting about it in the comments. You could tell the Mesa he only has T1 PD, says Norman Dirt. Kabobu, are we talking about you? That's Kabobu's com. There's one, two. There is that. There he is. He doesn't have it. And he's not Cybrin. What other Cybrins are there? Maybe it's just talking about the theoretical would have to do the upgrades first. Now is this Team 1's last hurrah? Megaliths going up against a horde of Percivals whilst being engaged by Novak satellites from orbit. Two Air Force standing off from one another. Happy Song, equipped with 233 fighters and four that are bingo on fuel. No fear. With 233, it's very, very even. Be about who gets the better engage. Wave of spy planes down the western approaches. We have strats lurking anywhere. That mighty Mavor still operational. But now look at this. The shells are raining on Kapobu's base. It's now completely devoid of defensive shielding. The shells are falling. Don't be stood next to the reactor for goodness sake. I think it's all academic at this point. He's going to eat a shell sooner or later. Oh, gets under one very, very weak shield. <laughs> But his base is in tatters. Is anything going on over here? Not really. They're actually moving in the opposite direction. He's trying to move further back. But nothing can save him from the range of that Mavor. Kapobu on 6,400 HP. Down goes the shield. He's looking for a home to go to, but there's no shelter anywhere. Novak satellite locks onto that signature. Sub 2000 HP, down to about 1500 now. And he is done for. How long left till the next strike? It's nearly charged up. Oh, it's a double strike. Why not? <laughs> no fear gets in. On the action, Schlongdis says a 900 is carrying. Well, he's certainly done some serious damage with those dukes. That's for certain. Love me some rice completes his laser upgrade. Hasn't got teleporter, but happy song. Control Kaying. He's up at the top. So this is the capitulation now from Team 1. Leaving Normander and Spectre Slave. Are they going to duke it out? They're going to play it to the end because, to be honest, there's no way they can stand up to that artillery pressure. It's actually beyond their capabilities. Normander up over here. 
And there's the control gate. I'm sure Spectre Slave will probably bow out next. Still diligently building defensive structures. This little Alamo up here. So interestingly, we've had constant pressure from the pond down here, but nothing has been able to break this little headland. Nothing until the artillery from the bases was brought to bear. There goes shield coverage. In comes the next volley. like he might be targeting the SMD and if he was that's a pretty good shot nothing can hold back the punching power of that Mavor and then on top of it you've got the follow up pressure from the Dukes Down goes the shield coverage, protecting the comm, and twin Novak satellites open up on Spectre Slave, whose hit points rapidly evaporate. Boom, baby! Down he goes at 50 minutes, almost 51 minutes. It's concluded with a very strong finish from Team 2, and a very strong finish from the weakest chap in terms of rating on the field. 900 rated Popeye. Down here, definitely Popeye on steroids, I think, is the uh, the conclusion that we can draw for that. No Fear was also great, and props also, I think, to Happy Song. He played a blinder with his air game. Team 1 overall, though, were just a little bit too defensive. They got suckered in over here. It's a, it's a fun map, actually, that the generator had uh, brought for us today. That one choke point made it so difficult to shut down this area, despite... Huge amounts of firepower being brought to bear down here by Team 2. They really didn't manage to break through anywhere down here. It was only artillery that got the job done, and that's what closed out the game. So MVP, I think. I'm going to give it to Popeye. Well done, sir. You deserve it. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you've seen everything, remember, guys, and you would like more, there's some 84 casts over on the Premium channel. It's a mere dollar a month. And uh, I'm not expecting to raise that anytime soon. It's the best way to support me and what I do. If you enjoy it, please go over there and check it out. Links in the description below this video. All right, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.